And what, what I love about this, bro, is that when we think about leadership normally, we think, we think about the vision of the world and the way the world is, but you're saying that you, can, that you can have a vision for your people and you having those high standards will actually create an amazing result as long as you believe. Look, at the end of the day, bro, look, we believe in our vision as in Ayur, right? We believe a world reconnected to Allah, a world reconnected to God. And we have a specific strategy a strategic focus, a set of actions that, that we have to adopt in order to achieve that. We may be wrong. <laughs> mm. We may have to change our vision or our strategic focus in the next three to five years. Who's going to do that for us, bro? It's going to be people. So why don't you develop people better than you to make better decisions? Because mm. sometimes I think in leadership, we think this vision is static and the strategic focus is static. It mm. could be. Don't get me wrong. You could yeah. have it for the next 50 years. But you know what? You have to also have some kind of epistemic humility and leadership humility, humility to understand. You know what? We may develop people to the point that they develop a better vision and they create a better strategy for us. But how, how do and I get over that? So there's this guy who I basically trained and taught and I taught him everything he knows. He was a butcher. He knew nothing. And now he's like becoming this amazing guy and he's getting famous. How do I deal with that? Like with my ego and my internal working, you know? Well, ego's the enemy. I was reading, yeah, uh, listen, amazing listening book. to, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Ryan Holiday, audio book. Yeah. yeah, he's brilliant. He's amazing, brilliant. But yeah. he's, he's like a, you know, stoic philosopher, if mm. you like. And stoicism, yeah, the stoic approach is very similar to Islam in many ways, yeah. but that's a different discussion. So, how do you keep your, how do you keep your ego in check as a leader with all these kind of things? Because what you're saying basically is that if you believe in this person, if you help this person, if you have this vision for them, this is all about the other person. This is like yeah. putting my ego to the side. Well, that's so what leadership you... that's what leadership's about. <laughs> it's not about you really, it's about other people. So how do you do that? Like let's say my ego's slightly bigger than it should be, like how do I get it to that point? Well, I think there's a few things. You firstly you have to realize that. So you have to have that awakening. Mm. You have to understand that the ego is a barrier to success. Mm. And you understand that rationally intellectually, but you also realize from an Islamic point of view, it's a barrier to divine grace and mercy and barakah. And you have to also create an environment within yourself that keeps your own ego in check. So say, for example, in our era, we've created, I've made finance above me in some quasi way, yeah, that I, I like fear them. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, like, you know, I, I have, we have a governance policy. I'm allowed to, you know, spend money onto our charitable objects and, and, you know, all of these things. But, you know, for example, any contract that's done, finance have to co-sign. But what does co-sign mean? It basically, they do any kind of external audit check. Mm -hmm. Is there any conflicts of interest? Did he really make the right decision? Not only that, we have like multiple levels of authorization now that no one can even make an accusation of mismanagement of funds by virtue of the process because I'm getting checked left, right and center. Mm. Now that keeps me in check, right? So that's an example of creating an environment that keeps yourself in check. Mm. Even when I make decisions. So I offered a subcontractor, say a certain amount. It was 300 pounds more than I should have technically, right? Well, it was within the kind of limit, but I gave him 200 pounds what someone thought I should have given him per month. I even shook hands. The following day, I get lumbasted. I'm like, nope, we're not doing this. The kind of thing, they'll go straight to the board. They'll, 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 they'll basically take me to account. Mm. To cut a longer story short, I had to retract. I had to apologize to the guy. said I made the wrong decision. I've, I've been taken to account by my control team, if you like. Um, and they have the authority to do that. So this is what we have to do. So you create an environment as well to try and suppress your ego. So you, you create principles that you believe in. And you know they're true, even from a spiritual and even from a professional point of view, um, that people could take you to account. And it's relatively transparent from that point of view. So you can never say, would well, you know I'm the CEO? How dare you I'm the CEO? That, that should never happen uh, in any leadership context. In actual fact, if someone takes you to account, you should love it. I mean, mm. the other day we we're having a conversation, you know, in the staff meeting with the operations manager and she basically, uh, she won the argument. And then I had to say, this is exactly why we hired you. Well done. And that's it. So look, for me, obviously, I don't want to secularize the discussion. So, and I'm not saying I don't have an ego, by the way. Yeah. Everyone has an ego, especially mm. me. But I think you need to, uh, we need to realize that the ego, the nafs or kibber, arrogance and ego are related in Islam are a barrier to success. And we need to understand something that shaitan is our teacher in this regard because shaitan teaches us how not to be. Mm. So when Allah tells shaitan to bow down to Adam, how does he respond? He says no. So he denies the ultimate authority. He thinks he knows 
right? So he always wants to be right, never wants to be wrong, mm. right? And he doesn't want to bow down. Essentially, he wants people to bow down to him. So he doesn't want to impo- he doesn't want to be imposed upon. He wants to impose. And he says, I'm fire, he's clay. He wants to look good, he doesn't want to look bad. This is the kind of nature of the nafs, the nature of the ego. Mm. So, look, obviously there's nothing wrong in wanting to look good and wanting to be right and not yeah. wanting to be imposed upon, for sure. But if it's at the detriment to being true to yourself and true to Allah, then that's excessive, that's the ego. Mm. For example, I always say to people, give up your right to being right, but be true to yourself. Because it could be by being true to yourself, you realize you were wrong. It could be that by being true to yourself, you realized that actually I shouldn't have done this. I need to look bad. I need to apologize. I need to basically say that that I was wrong. I need to do a retraction. It could be that being true to yourself and fundamentally being true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you should allow others to impose their opinions and their structures on you, not the other way around. Because you're being true to yourself and true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you notice in you an excessive kind of desire to always want to be right, never want to be wrong, an excessive desire of always wanting to impose, never wanting to be imposed upon, Mm -hmm. an excessive desire to always want to look good, never want to look bad, then that's the nature of the ego. So once you understand that, you need to keep yourself in check. And you Mm -hmm. need to have very good people around you that can keep you in check. Um, And I believe someone who doesn't have a mentor, who doesn't have scholarly types around you, that's a very dangerous person. That person should never take leadership ever. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the wonderful things I saw from you, actually, that um, there was opportunities that came your way and you were like, yeah, I think I should do this. And then you were like, no, I'm not going to do this. And I was like, bro, why are you doing it? Well, Sheikh so-and-so said that I, he doesn't think it's good for me, so I'm not going to do yeah. it. Yeah. Right? So this is, this is really, really amazing to be able to like take that advice and stuff.